everyone so moving on to the second part part two of square 13 we're going to be making Minnie's bow the pattern in the um, magazine is completely wrong um, it has five rounds and the only round that's correct is the fifth round um, so it's pretty much the same what I've done here but I had to make adjustments because otherwise you end up with too many stitches for the last round and then it just doesn't make sense. So I have gone ahead and tested it out. So I do actually already have um, the first part of the bow, which is looks like this. I mean, it's not exactly the, the most beautiful perfect bow you've ever seen, but I'm hoping by the time we've got that centerpiece and flipping that one over and having another one on the other side then it should pretty much look like it's supposed to in in the magazine um which is obviously the way they intended it so I'm glad that we should have something that slightly resembles what it's supposed to so um because I have written this pattern essentially myself it means I can share the full pattern with you. So what I will do for those who like to read rather than follow the video or like to perhaps do this both at the same time, I am going to put the written copy of the pattern in the description of this video just so you've got that one as well. Um, this video shouldn't take too long because it is quick making the bow um, but then of course we've got to sew it on and we've got to do the dots on it so that might take up a bit of extra time. So we're sticking with the cyan yarn and the four millimeter hook so get those ready, um, get your slip knot and get your loop already on your hook and let's get started with the bow. So I've got my slip knot on my hook. I'm purposely only leaving a really short tail on this one and that is purely because we're just going to simply put that tail underneath the bow when we sew it onto our square. So it really doesn't matter how long it is, just make sure you leave at least a couple of inches so it's not going to come undone. So the first step of Minnie's bow is to do a foundation chain so we need to chain four so one two three and four we're then going to do a double crochet into the second chain from the hook you can count how many stitches you've got you know that we just did four chains so one two three and four there's your four chains and we want to go into the second one from the hook that's your first one from the hook and this is your second so we're going into that one and doing a DC or a double crochet so we're pulling a loop through we're then yarning over and pulling through again we're then doing a double crochet into each of the next two chains so we're going into this one and then into this one. What you want to do from here is to chain two. Chain one, chain two, and we're then turning our work over. So we're working into the opposite side. Different stitch now, we're going to be doing a half treble. So we want to yarn over and into that first stitch of the round, which is at the bottom of your chains, we want to do a half treble. So we're picking up the two loops and pulling through a loop so we've got three chain, sorry, so we've got three stitches on our hook. We're then yarning over and pulling through all three. We're going to repeat that into the same stitch. So we're yarning over into that same stitch and pulling up a loop, yarning over, and pulling through all three. Sorry, I've got a I've got a hair in my yarn. There we go. So sorry, I'm just looking back at my pattern. We're then doing one 
half treble into the next stitch so yarn over and into your next stitch yarn over again and pull through all three we're then going to do three half trebles into the last stitch so yarn over I can't see this one very well from the angle that I'm at there we go there's one and then we're going back into the same stitch there's two yarn over and three and that is the end of round two we're then turning back over again so you want your work to look like this and we're going to chain two so one and two we're doing two half trebles into that first stitch again so remember at the bottom of your chains it is the first immediate stitch so we're yarning over going in through this one and then pulling through all three loops we're doing the same again into the same stitch we're then doing one half treble crochet into each of the next four stitches so yarn over we're going in through this one here so there's one two three and four and you will be left with one stitch at the end we want to do three half trebles into the last stitch again so we're yarning over going in through that last stitch and pulling up a loop going through all three there's our first there's number two and then our third we're then turning our work over again and it should look like this and that was the end of round three moving on to round four you want to chain two one and two and we're doing two half trebles into the first stitch so can you see on this one the V is sideways that's because we're doing half trebles and it looks slightly different I should have said that before but we want to go in between into that circle that gap in the middle there and you still got the V's on top so we're going in through here and then you've got three on the hook so we've done our first half treble and our second half treble we're then doing one into each of the next seven stitches so one two three four five six and seven and once again you've got your last stitch left there where you want to do three half trebles into that one just like the last two rounds so there's one there's two and three we then need to turn our work again and it should look like this so it's this round where I'm going to be following what it says in the magazine because it is actually correct so we're going to chain one this time and then into our first stitch we are doing a double crochet so we're going in through that stitch pulling up a loop yarning over pulling that one through and there's our first stitch done 
into the next one we are doing a half treble so we're yarning over into our next stitch yarn over and pull through all three we're doing two trebles into the next stitch so yarn over into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and pull through two and we're going to do that again into the same stitch so yarn over in through the same one pull through two and pull through two the next step is to do one slip stitch into the next stitch so we're going in through pulling a loop through and then just pulling that one straight through the next loop we're then doing a double crochet so pull a loop through yarn over and pull through we're then doing a half treble so yarn over in through and pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three the next instruction is to do two trebles so we're yarning over pulling up a loop yarning over pull through two pull through two we're going to do another treble into the same stitch so yarn over into the same stitch and pull up a loop pull through two and then pull through two we're going to do two double trebles into the next stitch so yarn over twice in through that stitch and then we are pulling through two pulling through two and pulling through two again yarn over twice in through the same stitch and pull up a loop pull through two pull through two and pull through two we then need to do two trebles into the next stitch again so yarn over in through and pull up a loop pull through two and pull through two same stitch into the same stitch so pull through two and pull through two then we're doing one half treble into each of the next two stitches so yarn over into your next stitch yarn over and then pull through all three yarn over into your next stitch yarn over and pull through all three and then we are doing a slip stitch into the top of the last stitch so going through pull through your loop and pull through and it really is that simple and we end up with that shape I'm just getting the other one which looks like this and then we will be sewing on the centre when we attach it to the square so there's that one finished just remember to tie that one to fasten it off leave a long enough tail because remember we're going to be sewing all the way around it to sew it onto our square and then you need to repeat that again so then we can flip it and that can be the other side of your bow once you've done that one pin it to your square remember from the other videos that I've shown you to look at where the bow lies exactly um, with regards to how many stitches in how many stitches down just so you can get it exactly perfect and use the magazine as your guide for that one to show you exactly where the center is and I'm then going to sew it onto my square as well and I will come back and show you when I've done that if you need some help remembering how to do that you need to refer back to issue one part two which was the Mickey motif that we did at the beginning um, and that will show you how to do that and then we are going to move on to doing the center of the bow and also the dots on the bow so I pin those both on and I have sewn all the way around um, because of the way um, the bow is crocheted your tail should be here so I've gone all the way around and then I've ended up my yarn is currently at the top sorry at the top of this point 
but we need to sew the center so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to over stitch and i'm going to go back in towards the center so that my yarn ends up here and we can do the middle of the bow i will just say and i should have said this as soon as i started filming when you're pinning these on make sure that the center of your bow is either side of that circle in the center and that is the way that you should be able to line those two up so as i said my thread is coming out the top of my bow and i'm just it doesn't matter how it looks because it's being hidden in amongst and it doesn't matter how big your stitches are either essentially what we want to do is we ju we just want our yarn to end up around the center so there we go mine is coming out the middle now i'll just do one more go back in to make it a little bit tidier and a little bit closer so now my yarn is coming you see it's pretty much right near that center circle and now we're going to over sew so you want to decide how big you want your loops to be i think i want mine to be you see where those those center stitches are i'm going to aim to do between halfway of them and then it will go between halfway of those ditches above you can't really see in the magazine how they've done it so it's quite difficult to judge i'm just going to turn on the side and then i'm going into the middle of those stitches there and just pulling down and then we've got our first loop you want to continue doing that then so i'm going back up in the middle And then back down in the center of this one you just want to continue going all the way along and it might not be that you just do one 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 so they all line up if you look there's two little sort of white gaps so can you see there and it might be that you do one over the top as well so i'll just keep going and do a few more why not do one to I'll go back a bit. So I'm just going back to the. Oh no, I've pulled my needle out. Just bear with me while I rethread. I guess it's about how much of a perfectionist you are, really, as to how many loops you do here and then how it looks at the end. You know what I'm like. I'm a complete perfectionist, so I will keep going until it looks perfect. So there I'm just covering up those ones that we've already done just to get rid of those little bits of white. And there, look, that's a little bit more covered up now. So I will keep going all the way along and I'll show you what it looks like when I filled in my, the centre of my bow. So there is the square with the bow added onto it and with my centre over sewn. That feels quite thick and bulky um, it makes it quite center heavy but as you can see at least we know that it's straight there's hardly any white bit showing i did have to extend the stitches um i know i was going like i said halfway through the stitch of the one above um but it just didn't look big enough so i have taken it to cover the entire stitches each side so if you were just for example if this was the row below i was going into these holes in the center here um and then into the holes of this one at the bottom of those stitches but there's stitches in the middle so it was either side of those just so just so you know um the book does do it slightly differently they um do do the french knots the dots before the center but i've done it this way because it just seems pointless to keep swapping yarn and going on to different colors um I have then gone ahead and for some reason I've ended up with this and I don't know why it just got stuck when I was over sewing this so all that work I did and making sure that this was perfect and everything was threaded in the right way and yep I've been left with one of those never mind it does look quite neat from the back I think 
I'm just showing you the back just to say that I have already threaded all my ends in because I wanted to do that before I do the dots so everything doesn't get caught up at the back. Um, but make sure you grab your white now and a needle and I will show you how to do the dots. So now we're going to be creating the spots on or the dots on our bow um, to look like this. And they're called French knots. There's already one on there because I haven't actually done this myself before. So I just wanted to practice one before I showed you. They're actually really simple to do. Um, obviously placement is completely up to you. Whether you want to look at the book and kind of follow exactly what they've done. And put them in the same sort of places. Um, that is what I'm going to try to do. Try to stick as close to the magazine copy as possible. Um, so I'll show you a couple of them. Um, so we, you want your white. Put that back on your needle. And make sure you've got enough of a non-working end there to thread in after you've done it. You will probably have an end for everyone. It, it's completely up to you whether you want to sort of cut the ends after every knot and then thread them in that will be the neatest look or I will show you how I'm doing it and not being neat and you can see the results on the back and what will happen if you don't do that anyway you're starting off threading your needle and then you want you your needle sorry to come from the back to the front of your work and pull everything all the way through we're then going to lie our needle on our work like that and remember not to pull this too hard because you're going to have the end of your wool at the back and it's not secure but we then just want to loop that over our needle twice. I don't think it particularly matters if you loop from front to back or back to front, I have no idea. Just put your thumb over that one just to make sure you hold on to it so it doesn't come loose. We're then taking that needle and we're going close to where it came through. You don't want to go back in through the same one, otherwise everything is going to come undone. And by same one, I mean you don't want to go back in through the same hole. But I'm going close to it, so I'm going to go in through here and pull that down. And then we're literally just going to pull that all the way through. Do it slowly so it doesn't knot up and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So there's my second spot. Now if I turn over, because it is over the white, I don't know if you can see there but I have ended up with a line um, and that is because I've decided not to cut my ends every time. Because I don't want to have 200 ends to weave in after I've done all the French knots. Um, but that is my choice. It's completely up to you. You can fasten that one off and start again there if you so wish. Um, I'll show you how to do another one now. So I'm now going to go over here. And go up through. Pull that one all the way through. Line my needle down, wrap my yarn over twice, hold it down with my thumb and then go back in through a different hole and pull it all the way through. And there's another one. So like I said, really simple and easy to do. I'm going to continue on with them until I've got enough and I'll show you the work when it's finished. So I finished all my French knots and there is the end of square 13. It does actually look lovely now it's finished but I think that's been my least favourite to do and it's honestly taken me I think between well at least two and a half weeks to film this video um, because I've had to keep stopping and starting because of how hard the colour work was and of course I also um, made the Mickey square in between just so I could get a feel of how to do the pattern before I started filming it for you guys 
the back doesn't look great you can see the ends all pulled across where I've done those French knots but given the fact that it's white on white I don't think it matters too much you can't see it that much I know a lot of you are actually going to um back your blanket anyway so it shouldn't matter too much so there is the final end product I'm actually quite proud and pleased that I've got that one done and I guess I shall see you guys in the next video make sure to follow me for notifications when the next video is up if you could leave a like and a comment on this video that would be wonderful and make me so happy so see you guys soon for number 13 when we will be making Mickey's face because you can now use this video to go ahead and make the next square. See you soon. Mm -hmm.